yeah, if you think you're gonna do it in your own strength, then you know what, yeah, you can do it. COVID, it's been helping people move their businesses from offline or brick and mortar to online. Systems yeah. are more important than skills as an entrepreneur today. It's yes. totally okay to reinvent yourself yes. multiple times, especially when you're an entrepreneur. Welcome to Profitable Coaching Conversations with Wendy Y. Bailey. If you're a coach, speaker, or industry expert, you're in the right place for sales and marketing wisdom and insight to grow your coaching business. Now, here's your host, Income Acceleration Mentor, Wendy Y. Bailey. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to the Profitable Coaching Conversation Show. I'm always thrilled to bring these amazing guests to you, and today's guest is no different. Stacy Bryuka, did I say it right, Stacy? You nailed it. Awesome. You I love it. it. I can use my phonetic understanding and education and knowledge and get it right. She is, I love that she is a geek girl for more than 40 years. She's been a clinical therapist for more than 25 years. And some people actually call her the technology therapist. We're going to find out a little bit more of that, about that. Welcome, Stacy. Thank you for having me, Wendy Why? Yeah, I appreciate you being here. I love that you are a geek girl. Tell me what that means to you. Oh, uh, you know, geek girl means so many things to so many people. Yeah. To me, I think what it means is I like to be one of the first ones to play with the new toys. Yeah. It's, yeah. you know, I got my first computer in the late 70s. It was a Commodore 64. What the heck is that? <laughs> girl, you, Google. <laughs> Go. I'm like, what? Go Google that stuff. Yeah. Commodore 64 was the first computer we had. It was before IBM had mm -hmm. their thing. And it was around the time Apple IIs were out. Okay. You've heard of an Apple II, which is a little box. Yeah, which was one of the yeah. first Apple machines. And a friend of ours had one of those and I was jealous. As, oh my God, I was jealous. And the funny thing is, is now I'm a Mac girl. I'm an all Mac girl. And the guy who had that, who was a friend of the family, he does PC work. Yeah. <laughs> so he's a PC guy now. Well, he's converted and you converted over the we, years. Yeah, we both converted. So, but to me, geek girl means is I, I've always, you know, so from that moment on. And, you know, if it's a gadget, a gadget, uh, an app, a mm. shiny, a whatever, um, particularly software, the older I've gotten, the more it's an app. And the more it, but, but even in hardware, I mean, I've got an Apple watch here Apple um, and, Nation, I get it. and this, this ring does my fitness. I'm what, it was one of the first ones that people had of that, right? That yes. Because cool I don't, I didn't like wearing my watch to bed, but anyway, <laughs> I love I, it. Like, I, I like, a geek I, girl too, so I love yeah. it. I call myself an undercover geek. Not Ooh. quite as prominent as, as how you've described yourself. Undercover yeah, in, or right. in the closet? Undercover. Because <laughs> every so often I'll say something or I'll let something out to people to, so that they know how geeky I am. Yeah. But it's not oh. really what I do. Yeah, you are undercover, kind of like yeah. a spy. Years ago, and I'll tell you this quick story. Years ago, uh, people called me the DIY diva. And it was because I was saying, oh, I learned how to do this. And let me tell you how I did that. Uh -huh. And I didn't want to be known for that. You know, I did not want people oh. saying, oh, Wendy, why well, knows how to do that? She's the tech girl. That's not who I was then. And I don't want to be that now. So for uh -huh. me, it, it means just sort of keeping it close to the vest. And every now and then I'll say something geeky, you know, let uh -huh. people know that I'm into some gadgets, but it's not constant and consistent enough for people to know how much of a geek I am. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and to me, one of the, there's two things that a gadget, gadget, software, something has to have it. Well, there's three things really, but okay. the biggest things are, it has to have a high level of functionality that I can see not only for now, but for long-term. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I tend to look at something and see the vision of what it's going to be. That's good. Um, apparently, I can see things into the future. Um, I've recently You're found out. Predicting these things. I'm, I, I, I'm predicting all sorts of things. Sometimes things I don't want to predict. Um, <laughs> but that's a whole different show. Yeah. Um, but the um, so high level of function mm -hmm. and 
it also, but it also has to have a really high level of um, intraoperability with the current toys and gadgets. Mm -hmm. um, you know, prices require that you do, you um, add like fifteen gadgets to make it work. Yeah, if it if it's you're going to have to you know now usability for me, I don't have to have necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, that it has to be simple and easy to use because I'm going to figure it out. Sure. Um, and I'm going to figure it out so that I can teach others because that's kind of one of my magic tricks. Gotcha. But the- What's the third thing? The third thing so sometimes is price. And usually when you catch things really early on like that, sometimes the prices, a lot of times the prices are lower mm -hmm. or you can get something for a lifetime. Right. So I own, I, I'm not even going to tell you how many- lifetime yeah, software yeah don't don't tell us don't tell i'm us. grounded from buying things on app sumo at the moment yeah. um but you i still look those at those people okay yeah uh, i still look at them and review them because if something is there and i have a client who needs that particular tool i mean so i'm constantly on the yeah i'm constantly on the lookout for the new stuff to give to say here's the kind of thing you need and being a lifetime product, it'll help save them money. Gotcha. So the saving money is not just for myself, but at this point it's more for my clients because I kind of have a functional tech stack. Now, mm -hmm. if something comes out and it has a new function that I don't have anything for, or I'm like, oh my God, in five years, that one's going to be whatever. You can't resist, can you? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm not quite that much of a geek. I, I got to slap my hand, that, but I understand. I really yeah. do. Why do some people call you the technology therapist? Tell me how you got that title. You know, it's been an evolving process. One of the things that started with is me helping. Well, it, it really started with me helping my grandpa how to use technology. Mm -hmm. He had had, he had Parkinson's disease, diabetes, and a stroke. Mm. So he was stuck in a wheelchair, had only the left side of his body, wanted to, you know, he was a social man before that, and he's stuck in the house. Obviously, way before COVID, this is in the late 90s, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and I am I knew as a clinical social worker that not only with the diabetes, but he had serious high risk for depression mm. because of everything. And so my mind went straight to what can I do to help him avoid potential depression? Sure. And I knew that social engagement was a thing he needed and that he couldn't get out of the house. I couldn't be there with him to teach him things all the time. But we, you know, he had, we got him a computer. I think they may have already had it. We got him a computer, internet, email, um, and I would call him on the telephone between therapy appointments. So I'm driving between therapy appointments, remembering what's on his Windows screen, because it was a Windows computer, and walking him through whatever task it was I was teaching him at that moment. That's my one of my origin stories. Yeah. Dear to my heart, because that helped keep him in contact with his war buddies. He actually henpecked with one hand some family recipes that are super precious now, typos and all. Yeah. Taught yeah. him how to put graphics in. He would print newspaper articles out for my grandma. He, you know, well, it, it just like you understand the use of technology to um, increase or or add quality of life for people. It has to. to. Yeah. Yeah. If I it does that. not add function and quality of life. You know, everybody's like, oh, you use technology all the time. What about human things? And I'm like, dude, whoa, hang on. Use technology to automate the things you can yeah. so you can liberate your time to do this right here. Yeah, yeah. Because this right here is the important thing. Mm -hmm. Or use the tech, we're doing it right now. Yeah, we absolutely we're using are. technology right now to yeah, build we're in our two relationship. Parts of the country, but we're mm -hmm. still able to come together to have this conversation that's really going to enrich the lives of the people who are watching and listening. So, absolutely. Yeah. So, who yeah. are your typical clients, Stacey? Um, so, originally, a lot of my typical clients were um, older, 
Mm-hmm. You know, um, one of my first clients uh, was also uh, my mentor. She taught me how to teach in graduate school. I taught her how to use, um, she was terrified, terrified of using a flip phone or, or, I mean, using a smartphone. She was stuck to her flip phone <coughs> and she was terrified of using any devices, mm-hmm. her laptop, her flip. And now you try and pull that smartphone out of that woman's hands. <laughs> she will bite She's you. Weird. She's an old pro now, huh? Um, well, yes, but also when we would go to, before COVID, we'd go to breakfast frequently and she'd hand the phone over to me. And what that meant was it needs updates and can you clean off and make sure everything's good? (laughs) So I'd do a, I'd do a checkup and she'd buy me breakfast. Um, but you don't have to do that anymore now. uh, Well, sadly, I'm not able to meet with her for breakfast. So I'm having to do, you know, her checkups happen over the phone now. Mm -hmm. Um, but and then it's have evolved into entrepreneurs. One of my other first clients and my best success story is one of my best friends. Uh, she has a gluten-free bakery here in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. And I helped her. I said, girl, you need to start and do this website-wise or social media-wise, or you need to use this app or this tool. And she'd be, why? I don't understand. No, no, no. No, you need to. I'm serious. We need to build your audience. I don't even have the bakery open yet. We need to build your audience. Flash forward to her first anniversary of the bakery being open. Mm -hmm. Actually, I take that back. Flash forward to the day she opened. And I said, guess what? The whole town, because we live in a suburb, is Mm -hmm. coming to your opening. Because you started that audience. Oh, no, no, no. Technology. They did. Then a year later, in the heat of the summer, the hottest day of the year, People stood in line, and I'm going to kid you not, for eight hours for gluten-free funnel cakes. Wow. Because. That's story. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, because before that event, I said, girl, you better be careful. The whole city is showing up. The whole region. Every You're going to have a hun- hundreds of people here. Oh, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. They did. And she now calls that her biggest, her, her most successful failure. Nice. Because it was so, you know, and she still has that following to this day. And thankfully, I don't have to do her social stuff anymore or her website. I do some things for her, Mm -hmm. but a lot of it she does herself. And we joke, she'll call me and she actually just stopped by today. The aliens showed up. Oh, yeah. What'd they do this time? That means that she did something herself that was tech that she wouldn't have done. So she's, she's my, one of my dearest, um, uh, matter of fact, I get gluten free, even when I don't eat gluten free, I get gluten free cake for my family events. Yeah. And these aren't cheap cakes. Yeah, they're not. Yeah. And, and I get them for, I get them for a good sister discount. <laughs> I love it. I love right. It. I love it. So, so we're yeah. going to take a quick break, Stacy. Great story. <laughs> and then when we come back, we're going to go through our signature segment, Profitable Wisdom. Okay. I'm excited. Okay, we'll be right back. Hi everyone, Wendy Y here, and I want to extend a personal invitation to you to join the Profitable Coaching Society. It's a growing community of more than 300 coaches, speakers, industry leaders, marketplace influencers, and emerging thought leaders who look, sound, and have businesses just like you. Over in the society, we are talking all things sales and marketing, we're talking personal development, we're talking professional development, and my My goal in creating this community is to make sure you have a place where you can come and get sales and marketing support, coaching, tips, strategies, and you also have an opportunity to network others with others in the community. So be sure to join me at ProfitableCoachingSociety.com. That's ProfitableCoachingSociety.com. And I'll see you over there. Take care, everyone. Bye. Hi, I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler, and you're tuned into the Profitable Coaching Conversation Show with Wendy Y. Bailey. Make sure that you like, comment, and review. Subscribe now so that you will know when the next episode goes live, and you'll be glad you did. Hi, I'm Laura E. West, a certified lipsologist, and you've tuned into the Profitable Coaching Conversation Show with Wendy Y. Bailey. Like, comment, review, and subscribe now. 
and you'll be notified when the next episode goes live. Hi, I am Dr. Monique, and you're tuned into the Profitable Coaching Conversation Show with Wendy Y. Bailey. Like, comment, review, and subscribe now so you're notified when the next episode goes live. Hello and welcome back. We've been talking with Stacy Brauka, who is the technology therapist. That's what some people call her. And we've had a delightful time talking about technology and shiny objects and all that kind of stuff. But now we're getting into our profitable wisdom segment. It's our mm -hmm. signature segment on the show. It's the five questions that we ask every single guest that gives you some insight, inspiration, and empowers you to do some things differently in your life and business. So the first question is, who has had the greatest influence on you in your life, Stacey? Mm. Well, let's go, I'm going to go I'm going to take them in their birth, what I think is their birth order. Okay. Let's see if that works. One of the first ones um, is um, Eleanor Roosevelt, just because I think she, she embodies being a strong female mm -hmm. in a world that really didn't have a lot of strong, you know, didn't allow strong females. She, she kind of came out of and, and followed what, who I call the grandmothers. Mm -hmm. And to me, the grandmothers are those who fought for social justice and fought for the suffragettes, literally yeah. the suffragettes that fought for all of us, for us to have the right to vote and those different things they fought for in the progressive era. Um, so Eleanor Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. Then the next one would be um, my mom, mm -hmm. Kathy. And she showed me growing up what it was like to come from that world where women weren't supposed to go to school, go outside of the house to work. Yeah. They were supposed to stay home with the kids. This is in the seventies, you know, stay home with the kids, blah, 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 you know, suburbia, all that yeah. mm -hmm. to the fact that she had a desire to do more than that. Mm -hmm. So I watched her go to school and da da da, get a job later and, you know, eventually divorced my dad and continued to show us those things. So she's always one of my biggest sheroes. Um, and then the third one is a current contemporary and um, I'm blessed to call a colleague because she's also a clinical social worker or she's also a social worker and researcher and that's Brene Brown. Yeah. When you said that, I thought that's Brene Real, Brown. It's yeah, Brene. loves Brene. I'm telling you. And smart and funny <laughs> and brilliant and irreverent. Uh-huh. Uh yeah. 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 I am a Malvi social worker for social justice and who loves qualitative research. And she's a qualitative researcher. Mm -hmm. And so my research brain is all about qualitative research. And I actually am modeling my next big project, which is a mastermind, about er, in the style of Brene. Excellent. Not only because of Brene, but because I learned the same things in school and yeah. Well, I can do it too, darn it. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that project is based around, you know, how hers, her projects are based around one word or concept. Mm -hmm. And mine is based around tenacity. I love it. It's I called Tenacious, it. Tenacious Life. Um, and there are a variety of pieces and parts to it. It will be coming in 2021. Um, some pieces sooner than later. And it has to do with those things that those women all taught me. Yeah. Awesome right. Influence. Awesome yeah. Influence. Yeah. So let's move on to our next question. What's the best business advice you've ever received? That's going to have to go to one of my dearest colleagues um, with Done For You Concierge. And that is Paula Allen, who said, delegate. Yeah, that's a big one. Oh, that's a big yep. one. And, and she, you know, once she got me to start taking things off my plate and putting them onto a team. Mm -hmm. things started moving forward. Yeah. And so I'm going to give a big, big old props to my friend Paula Excellent. for that. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So what's the largest single sale you've had in your business? What was the amount and the circumstances? Well, the circumstances when I started talking to this potential client were what we now call normal, but frankly, everything we do in life, no matter what day it is, is normal, but I digress. Mm -hmm. Um, the circumstances were pre-COVID mm -hmm. and it was a, a five-day online summit. Mm -hmm. 
because I was working on, you know, our Dunfrey Concierge uh, is their predecessor and current. We do online summits, online events for people. And so that was, he um, was a, a gentleman who had a fairly large amount of money, a pretty high dollar client. Um, and it was a four figure sale for a five day event. Mm -hmm. Um now, because it happened in the midst of COVID and some other things happened, um, it ended up being um, the event. The event didn't happen the way it was supposed to. Okay. <clears throat> so maybe when I'm talking successful failures, you know, um, it wasn't because of me that the event didn't happen. It was because of some things that happened with the the customer. Um, yeah. But it was so we're talking largest single sale. Yep, it was my largest single sale to, okay. uh, and probably still to date. It, it there's a couple that are getting ready; they're going to eclipse it. But at that time, so it we're was. talking nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars. You said four figures. I said four figures, but it was a, maybe a little less than that one. Is about half that one. Okay. <laughs> so well, the good. new the new stuffs, yeah, and that but that was that was a year ago. Yeah, I like that was to, literally a year ago. I like to to make sure you share the amount because yeah. a lot of the conversations I have with my clients and people in the marketplace revolves around price, yeah. revolves around fees. So I, I like for people to hear that because I mm -hmm. want them to see the possibilities and hear the possibility oh, yeah. of what yeah. they can generate, you know, in well, the yeah. And the next ones are, are going to, the stuff that's coming is going to be bigger than that. And it's because it's it. possible. Yeah, I love it. I mm -hmm. love it. So yeah. Stacey, we all have those times when we feel like giving up. What has helped you to move <sighs> through those times to stay the course in your business? I think one of the biggest is building my own biz girl, geek girl support network. Mm -hmm. People um, who know things um, different things than you do who can support your work? Really? Actually, a lot of, well, the, as, as I created, again, I talk about that done for you concierge team as that team came about, it is a group of, of geek girl women who are putting, um, have our own businesses outside of that, but, you've but come this to we've come them. together as a project. Yeah. And so we do things together, but then we also do things apart and we support all of the above for each other. Um, one of our biggest values as a team is that we empower other women in their businesses. Mm -hmm. That is our core. That's literally our core value nice. in that in that group. Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes it's you know we'll we'll hang out it in the middle of the night in a Zoom room, and it's mm -hmm. I get that we, we'll we'll do it just hanging out, and maybe we don't do anything about business. Yeah, or, it's a support team a success yeah. team. It's, that helps you stay on track. I love we keep it. each other accountable, you know, and uplifted and inspired mm -hmm. and empowered. And yeah, yeah, yeah I get and, it. And, and it's more than just that one team. I have, you know, um, one of my magic tricks apparently is building communities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm just now coming into that's that good. one. Yeah, that's so, great. Or, or oh, uh, no, I'm not coming into it. I've had it for all my life, apparently, but I'm just now owning it. Gotcha. I'm, I'm just now owning it because it's been there for a long time. Understand, understand. Mm -hmm. And what's your greatest personal accomplishment outside of your business? Mm, this one's interesting. Yeah. I'm going to say surviving. Mm -hmm. We talked about it before, so tell your story. <laughs> I was born one pounds, 11 ounces. Now, I realize if you're on video and you see me, you're like, girl no way and, and I'm like yeah. I'm like I know I wish I still was proportionally <laughs> where that was right yeah but I wasn't supposed to live 24 hours yeah. and mind you remember this strong woman that I said inspired me is standing outside of a window oh I forgot to say she went back to work in the same hospital I was born in because that's where she was working at the time mm. she went back to work and people saw her in street clothes and they were pointing at me saying, you see that one there? They say she's not going to live. Wow. Not knowing, not knowing. She was your mom. She was my mom. Mm. And that this woman stood there and watched that and lived through that and mm -hmm. later passed on to me that tenacity. Mm -hmm. And 
So my biggest personal accomplishment, I say, and, and it's a pattern in my life that I start things early. Mm-hmm. I mean, I started, started life early. It, it literally yeah. started from the get, you yeah. know, this isn't a habit I developed. It's, it, <laughs> it happened to me, not, not just uh, by choice, or maybe it was, I think I wanted out of there, you know, <laughs> anyway, I start things early and then I survive, which is how Tenacious Life got its name. Yeah. And I think if I were to even uh, tweak that just a little bit, you mm-hmm. start things early, you survive and thrive. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah. I would add True. the thrive because survival just sounds like you barely made it and you're barely doing it. No. From what I know of you, Stacy, in our conversations, you're also thriving in many areas. So I would add that word. I mean, just away. from being born in that scenario mm-hmm. and at that time, mm-hmm. besides not being alive, if I lived, I was supposed to have, I was supposed to be blind, completely yeah. blind. Yeah. I was supposed to have brain damage. Some <laughs> will argue that I do. Yeah. We won't <laughs> talk about that. Yeah. You know, I was supposed to have so many detriments. Sure. I have never in my life felt like I had a detriment other than I'd like that proportion back a little bit, please. (laughs) You know, I hear you. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you so much for sharing, Stacey. We're going to come back and you're going to share your parting thought and describe the gift that you have for our audience. Okay. Sounds good. We'll be right back. Hi everyone, Wendy Y here, and I want to extend a personal invitation to you to join the Profitable Coaching Society. It's a growing community of more than 300 coaches, speakers, industry leaders, marketplace influencers, and emerging thought leaders who look, sound, and have businesses just like you. Over in the society, we are talking all things sales and marketing, we're talking personal development, we're talking professional development. And my goal in creating this community is to make sure you have a place where you can come and get sales and marketing support, coaching, tips, strategies, and you also have an opportunity to network others with others in the community. So be sure to join me at ProfitableCoachingSociety.com. That's ProfitableCoachingSociety.com. And I'll see you over there. Take care, everyone. Bye. Hi. This is Colin C. Thompson, and you're tuned into the Profitable Coaching Conversation Show with Wendy Y. Bailey. Like, comment, review, and subscribe now to stay notified when the next episode goes live. Hi, I am Donetta D. Mori, and you are tuned into Profitable Coaching Conversation Show with Wendy Y. Bailey. Like, comment, review, and subscribe now so you will be notified when the next episode go live. Hey, this is Tanya Smith, and you're tuned into the Profitable Coaching Conversation Show with Wendy Y. Bailey. So make sure you like, subscribe, comment now so that you're notified when the next episode goes live. Okay, welcome back. We've been talking with the technology therapist. Stacy Bryuka, and we've had a delightful conversation. There's been so much really juicy advice, insight she shared around her own personal journey that you can glean from for your own journey. And so if there's one nugget, Stacy, that you'd like to be sure people walk away from this conversation with, what's the one nugget? One of the things I think is having grace with yourself Mm -hmm. Um, alongside that perseverance especially when you're dealing with anything, but especially when you're dealing with technology, I know a lot of people are scared to death of it or they're, they don't like it or they don't see where it fits or they just, they just don't want to deal with it, but have grace and perseverance with yourself with it. Um, Because there are ways that it helps us do that. It helps us connect. Yeah. It helps us connect and it helps quality of life. Mm -hmm. You definitely said that. In, in what you've shared. If it's not helping your quality of life, you don't want to, it, it, that's ridiculous. Don't do things that don't help just for the of sake of a gadget is not okay. No, absolutely not. Never. For sure. And mm-hmm. I know you have a gift that you want to share that's going to be really yummy for people. You told I, me about it. So describe it here. I do. Link in the, in the show notes. Yeah. It's a bundle. It's a gift. That's a bundle of gifts. Actually. It's not just one thing. And you're going to have a check technology foundations checklist. 
-hmm. So you can, you know, if you're like, I don't know if I have all the things I need this checklist, you can go down and mark the things you have or don't have. Mm -hmm. And it gives you ideas. It also has some ideas in it of what are the different types of tools. So for example, um, an all-in-one technology type tool might be something like Kartra or Influencer Soft, mm -hmm. an email where it has all the different pieces and parts versus a, um, an email tool like MailChimp or uh, MailerLite or ActiveCampaign. Okay. Um, and so some of the different pieces and parts that you need to really put things together as a business also goes into a good chunk on J, uh, joint venture things that are good to have, building referral partners. Yeah, this sounds like a technology bundle that people just need to be able to access. And so then there's another, a second checklist, a webinar, and an appointment with us all in it. So there's a bunch of goodies in this bundle. Stuff. Thank you so yeah. much, Stacey. I appreciate it. I appreciate you being here, and I, and I love the conversation. Thank you so much. I, you are amazing, Wendy Y. I love your presence and your invigoration. Um, I'm going to be like on a high the rest of the day. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that. I am. Thank you. So thanks so much for being part of this conversation with us. We'll see you next time. Be sure to check us out and join us at ProfitableCoachingSociety.com. That's a growing community of coaches, speakers, et cetera, transformation experts in a private Facebook community that you can engage with, you can learn from people, you can become part of it, you can share and add value. We look forward to serving you there. That's ProfitableCoachingSociety.com. We'll see you next time for another episode. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for tuning in to Profitable Coaching Conversations with Wendy Y. Bailey. Be sure to join us at the after party at www.profitablecoachingsociety.com. We'll see you next time for more sales and marketing wisdom and insight from Wendy Y. and her amazing guests. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you know when new episodes are posted.